Well, Sydney commuters are in for another tough one today, facing major train disruptions as workers strike for the second time this week. Joining us live now is the union boss, Alex Classens. Alex, good morning to you. So last night, the government offered to make $260 million worth of changes to the intercity fleet. Why proceed with the action? Well, the action is part of a, uh, a month-long plan. Uh, we put a calendar out at the beginning of the month. Uh, and just to remind people, of course, this is a battle we've been fighting for six years to try and get the government to agree to make these modifications to the train. Uh, more recent history, of course, was that I actually signed an agreed deed on the 30th of June, uh, which was then, you know, some days later, ripped up by uh, Damien Cheetah, the Industrial Relations Minister, and we went back to the table. Um, yesterday was more game playing from that minister. We were sitting in a room yesterday with all the other rail unions negotiating our enterprise agreement. And uh, I went out at 2.30 to give the press an update on where things are at. Uh, I was then advised that the minister was going to make a press conference statement at 3.30, uh, 10 minutes before that conference commenced, that uh, his press conference. I then got an email with a deed in it. Um, it looked nothing like the deed that we'd previously worked on. It was a brand new deed and so, you know, the other bit that a lot of people don't appreciate, people that don't work in the railway industry, um, it actually takes two days to actually put all the plans in place to make trains run to different schedules, different timetables, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So any chance of cancelling any sort of industrial action has to be done with at least 48 hours notice. But why not? for the railway to make the necessary changes. But, but, um, with the union also needs 48 hours to be able to run through our democratic processes. And like I said, that deed is not the deed that I signed on the 30th of June. So very disingenuously, the minister went out there, sent me a document 10 minutes before his press conference and actually gave, supposedly told everybody the union's going to be happy with this. Well, the only people that know whether the union's going to be happy with this or not are the members and the delegates of our union. And when we've got that document to a point where we're comfortable with it, we will send that out through our delegate processes and we will then stand up there and own it like everything else that we've done right through this whole campaign. Right, but why not call the action off while you consider and look at that deed as a show of good faith rather than frustrate thousands of travellers. Be because, Peter, as you would know, you've been following this pretty closely, like a lot of other journalists have. We have had endless backflips. The first backflip happened nearly four years ago, five years ago now, when Andrew Constance did a press conference with me and said, I'm going to fix those trains. He gets re-elected, he cancels the contract variation. We've had promises like that continually February, we had the government and the senior bureaucrats shut down the rail system and tried to blame us for it. Since then, we've had promises made by David Elliott, a decent, hard-working transport minister. He sits in a room with us, he reaches an agreement with us verbally, and five minutes later, Damien Tudorhope and other government ministers override him and, and, and we go back to the, to the table again. The constant backflips that keep happening is just not conducive for anybody accepting anything that's said verbally anymore. My members and delegates are demanding a written document that's ironclad and it's a legal document that nobody can worm their way out of. And that's what I will be signing when we are all comfortable about that. As soon as we do that, we will go and have a conversation with our members and delegates about postponing industrial action. But I also want to make it really clear, this is a fight that the Rail, Tram and Buses Union has been having, that Rail, Tram and Bus Union and its members have been having separate to our enterprise agreement negotiations. Those agreements are ongoing. They ha involve six unions led by Unions New South Wales and those conversations will still continue and at some point there may still be further industrial action somewhere down the track as we iron out wages and conditions which right, happens right. every three years as regular as clockwork. So you're not, any, you're not any closer to the end of strikes with all of this? Well, look, I'm hoping that there is, Peter, because, you know, as a long-term railway employee, all I want to do is be out there making sure the trains are doing the job that we need them to do for the good people in New South Wales. That's what we all signed up for. I signed up in this job 1978, and I'm very proud of all the work we do. And I've got to tell you, there's not too many people more angry and frustrated out there than me at the moment, because I have never seen a worse situation than this current one 
the way all these current ministers have been obfuscating, the way the media have been handling this whole exercise has been, you know, less than helpful. Uh, you know, there's been the well, whole thing has been handled atrociously. Yeah, people are just not following the history of this. Sure, but this you're not you're not helping yourself. A safety issue. You're not helping yourself though by no, saying the I, trains you know, can't go can, by, you, by 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 look, by having graffiti on but, them. I mean, you're not helping yourself there, right? No, but, but the railway sets those standards. I don't. And this is the problem. Everybody's targeting Alex Classen as a union official. What they're not seeing here is Alex Classen's the railway worker that follows the rules and regulations put in place by the railway. Those minimum standards are put there by the railway. They are the ones that have said, we do not want trains running out there with obscene graffiti. We don't want swastikas. We don't want bad damage done to our trains. They are the ones that set those standards in place. All of our members were doing were enforcing those bans, those... Um, those standards that the, that the railway managers have put in place and have always been there. But the problem we've got now is that these new trains that they're using, they are now subjected to a 60-day cycle of servicing where our, our existing railway, sorry, railway Australian-owned trains were subjected to a 30-day cycle. So the problem is the trains aren't going in there to get serviced as much as they used to, where those issues used to be dealt with on a daily basis. Today, they're not. OK, Alex Classens, we will have to leave it there and see how that progresses. Thank you for your time this morning. I'll talk to you soon.